Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe down below, like, comment, and follow me on Instagram at underscore yoga in. Or you can follow me at four day JK. And sign in. I know Facebook and Instagram says that you got to sign in and it's annoying. But go ahead and help a sister and a brother out and sign in. So. All right, so I know I said that this next blog or vlog would be our birth story. However, that is requiring a lot of editing. So we decided to get uh, to do a get to know me vlog instead so that you will find out more information about the people behind the channel. So we're going to start off with answering questions about ourselves and then some questions about our relationship that we got from people on Instagram. So I'm going to start by asking Daryl some GC questions. Okay, I just picked it up. Where did you go to school and what was your major? I went to the Cheney <laughs> University and my major was business management. Are you growing dreads? I am currently trying to grow dreads. My hair has been growing for the past, not a year yet, but yeah. Or locks, sorry, locks, I forgot I'm that's the, the proper word is locks. Yeah. So you are going to grow locks? Eventually, yes. Okay. <laughs> are you a twin? If so, how do you feel having twins? Well, I am a twin. <laughs> Shout out to Derek. And uh, having a twin uh, is probably the best feeling uh, in the world, or the most joyful feeling. You're a twin. I mean, you're going to have twins, especially when you first try. So it's amazing. If you could live in any city besides Philly, where would it be? Okay, so I always, I'm always telling Ebony that I want to live on the West Coast. And for some reason, I'm always bringing up California. It's been, you know, for years. Uh, it's probably going to be Los Angeles, California right now. It could change, though. Oh, yeah, I would never move to California. I, I mean, I always wanted to move there first originally, but uh, I'm just a big fan of you know, out the country. How many siblings do you have? I have five siblings on my mother's side and about five siblings on my brother's side. So my, I mean, brother's side. I mean, my, so my father's side. <laughs> My father's side. Well, it's about ten of us all together. Zing, Zaddy. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to return the favor and ask her, what school did you attend and what was your major? I went to Penn State University. We are. I heard y'all say Penn State back. <laughs> my major was nutrition, so that was what my degree is in: nutritional sciences. If you were to go to any sporting event at your university, what would be the first one you would attend? Football, of course, because Penn State is a football school. I don't, matter of fact, I think the whole time I was up there, I never attended an actual basketball game, like just on wow. football. Wow. What is your favorite books? What type of books are your favorite books to read? Any books about nutrition. I'm like not new to this, I'm true to this. Although, <laughs> I will say I appreciate the, the holistic wave um, because it definitely has so many people, especially of color, like now watching what they eat. But I've been about nutrition since I was 19, no, 20. So that's 12 years now that I've been researching. And yeah, so any books about nutrition, that's what I'm currently reading now. And that's just what I love to read. Even if I know the information, just hearing it over and over again just excites me. All right. Next question. If you were an animal, which animal would you be? I would be, I don't know. Growing up, my favorite animal was an elephant. I don't know why. Maybe because it began with the E. Okay. You know, my bad. You watch the Sesame Street. E is for elephant. Um, <laughs> but... I don't know. After seeing them when we were in Houston, their lives seem pretty uh, <laughs> right, 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 like yeah. boring. Maybe like a cheetah or something. Yeah. Yeah. Cheetah, that's dope. All right. right. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Okay. If 
if you won a thousand dollars today for the rest of your life every day, what would you spend your money on? I would spend my money on nutritious foods. <laughs> I would definitely quit my job. <laughs> I didn't do it. Uh, no, okay, my next question, I think it made me sick, but oh well. All right, so if you were single, where would a friend typically typically catch you on a Friday night? That's a great question because uh, shoot, I used to be out in these streets, okay? Like, you know, I don't know. I would triple book plans. It was so sad. And it was already bad that I was barely remembering anything. I was like, yeah, yeah, we could do that. And then sometimes I'm like, all right, which one would have the most fun at? I'm going to pick this. And I don't know, I would be at different friends' houses. I was just like, you know, doing different things. So, definitely. Okay. yeah, social butterfly. All right, all right. That, that's it. You about to keep going. I was, I was. The question yeah. number seven. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now that you got to know a little bit about us, we're going to go on Instagram to answer the questions that people had in regards to a relationship Q&A. So the first question we got was, when dealing with anger, do you like to talk about it or do you prefer space? Okay, so me, I actually like, <clears throat> I prefer space. If we are angry and we just had an argument, uh, leave me alone for a few minutes, let me, you know, calm back down, and then, you know, we continue the rest of the conversation. And what do I prefer? She prefers to talk immediately, <laughs> which is sometimes unrealistic, you know, especially when you're upset. Yeah, like when I say I'm so like, oh my God, we're still on that. It'll be like two minutes later. Like get over it. That's how I always feel. Like build a bridge and get over it. I get over stuff pretty quick. So I was wanting him to get over stuff pretty quick. And he'd still be fuming mad. Talking about he need this space. I need a couple minutes to myself. He need a couple so minutes to himself. Head. So that, oh, that's where the scarf went. I couldn't find it. <laughs> So, yeah, we differ in that. He needs space. I want to talk immediately, and it works out. It works out. Okay, someone asks, when you're single, what are the best things to do to prepare for your next partner? Okay. Yeah, so I feel like the best thing that you can do is work on yourself because, um, well, I'm not going to say as you heard Daryl mention before because we've never done this before, but... If you talk to me and Daryl, he'll tell you that uh, one thing that he liked about me is that I came to him already on my journey of like self expo not self exploration, self awareness. Ooh, that's a good one. Of self awareness, like I was already in the mode of finding who I was and what I was willing to accept and what I wasn't willing to accept any longer. Um, yeah, I was just in a really good, confident space at the, the time I met him. So I really think to prepare for your next partner. You need to get there because the number one thing that I was messing up with prior to Daryl was I was too busy trying to be a, the perfect version of either what society said or what I thought a person wanted me to be. By the time I met him, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to be myself. And thankfully, I met a real one. You know what I mean? <laughs> you <did it>? yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So someone said, where do you find a real N-word? So where would you think do you, you and your opinion knowing where guys hang out where do you feel like would be the best place for a single gal to meet people? okay the best place for you to meet a single gal i would say is no we're a single gal to meet guys like i know oh. now are you looking for a particular type of person they want a real n-word <laughs> Everybody, you know, they, they like that title, but what does the title really mean? You know, so I don't know, honestly. Well, I think that you can find them any 
where the same place you're gonna find the fake ones you know you just gotta weed through doesn't matter where you you go you know um, I think that when you're single, though, you have to be in more places or be open to meeting people more than just, like, at the bar or, like, at parties. You know, we met through a mutual friend. Um, before that, you know, I don't know. Like, they, yeah, they, we just dated people, you know, through mutual friends, and I guess people kind of were attracted to us. What does being loved correctly look like to you? On TV? Huh? I'm loved correctly. That's what it looks like. It looks like me. It looks like you. Yes. It looks like you. Now, being loved correctly to me, and I just brushed on this in the question uh, prior, being uh, yourself, basically, and being with someone that allows you to be yourself. So, yeah. Yeah, I was second there. I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. And I, 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 she's the first woman that I have been with in my adult life. Where I have been myself the entire time. Right. The reason why I say my adult life is because when you're younger, you, you think you're being real with certain things based on what you know, what you learned growing up. So, yeah. Right. Right. Your glass half full or half empty? Yeah, you can't say. I think it just depends on the day, to be honest. I definitely have my days where I'm looking at things like with the most positive lens ever. There are days where I'm looking at things with. A bull of negativity, so it just depends on what day you catch me on, to be honest, okay? And I, they're all a pretty positive person. I would say, um, especially that now I'm getting older and we're, we're kind of viewing the world for what it is, uh, I try to wake up with a positive attitude every day. Um, yes, we all get angry, and, you know, we all have our little modes that we get in, but I don't know, I try to be optimistic. I don't know what you think, babe. Yeah, you're a pretty optimistic person. What's the hardest thing about dating you? So, like, yourself. I don't know. I was stressing. Okay, so one of the hardest things about dating me, it's a few. Um, I, I expect, I will say I expect this, for the woman to have basic home skills. That is not the hard, babe, no. really? Seriously? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, I mean, um, I think I'm right a lot. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I think I'm right a lot. Right. Uh, that would be probably one of the hardest things dating me. Um, yeah, I think I'm right a lot. <laughs> okay, I'm asking you the same question you just asked me. I understand that. <laughs> So, the hardest thing about dating me would probably be, um, I hate being told, like, what to do. Like, I just, yeah. I don't follow direction very well. I really don't. And this is at work or, like, in life. And that's probably the reason why I end up in, like, dumb situations sometimes. But it is what it is. You live and you learn. And then we have one more. Let me see find it okay the question is how do you get over times when you feel like you can't be around the person you're seeing anymore can't be around them meaning anymore like i'm guessing you need your space like how do you get over times when you feel like you just can't be around the person uh you just have space i mean you, you access a lot you some space i don't know you just get some space you, should, you know, you chill out for a little bit, and then you went back into it. I, it's, it's kind of weird how I answered that. I, mean, I feel like that was a, a good answer. You At that point, you take space. And I don't mean space as in, like, a break. I mean space as in, like, go do your thing for a couple hours. I'm going to do my thing for a couple hours, and we'll come back and reconvene. Correct. Because ain't no breaks over here. We don't go on no breaks. I don't believe in a break. No, she don't. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you need to be together or we not. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, because I heard of a break on TV. Totally we can take a break. So I got really like, what the hell was a break? Like, I ain't doing that. Beep, bleep. Yeah, because you know what can happen in between those breaks that you, know, you may never be forgiven for. Right. That was our last question. Did you have any, like, relationship questions that you wanted to ask me? Or... Where do you see our relationship in 30 years? In 30 years? 
Well, I'm hoping in 30 years we're still fit. Both of us are still like fit. And our children will be like grown. So me and you will be traveling and chilling and just on our health stuff. Yeah. Somebody crying. All right, guys. So we here with the babies. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, thank you so much for watching this again. Please subscribe, like, and comment in the actual comment section. We're actually running a little contest, and the comment that will qualify you for entry is pinned to the top of the comment section. So scroll down. Thank you, and. <laughs> yeah.